Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my channel and welcome to my guide of four things that you can do on an epic day trip to Bristol. So before we begin, uh, a little bit of information about Bristol. Bristol is the largest city in the south of England and it's actually been named the most artistic city in the UK. It's also a completely green city, it has over 400 parks and gardens spread throughout um, and as you explore you will definitely encounter a lot of them. And it's also been named the kindest city in the UK. So. What's not to love? So Bristol is also very close to the city of Bath, uh, which is home to one of my favourite things in the UK, which is the Roman Baths, uh, which have actually been named one of the best preserved Roman ruins in the entire world. It's not very far away at all, so I would definitely recommend if you've got more than one day, take a day trip to Bath. But without further ado, back to Bristol and uh, let's begin the list. So my first thing to do would be something that caught my eye straight away, uh, which is the SS Great Britain. So this is a, uh, a really famous ship that is located right in the middle of the Bristol docks. And to be honest, I would recommend a walk around the, the docks anyway. I think they're definitely my favourite part of Bristol, uh, just full of so many things to do. But this ship, it just looks absolutely spectacular. It is an amazing feat of engineering, as well as having a very interesting history, makes this ship a must visit, in my opinion, when visiting Bristol. So, a little bit of history. Um, this ship was built in 1843, and it was the largest ship in the world when it was first built, thanks to its hull being constructed from iron rather than the usual wooden hulls at the time. So this ship was designed by a man called Eisenbard Kingdom Brunel, who is a really important figure in Bristol. Um, he also designed the Clifton Suspension Bridge um, in Bristol, which I'll talk about later. But the SS Great Britain was a passenger steamship. It was the first to cross the Atlantic Ocean in 1845, and it later went on to serve as a warehouse ship in the Falkland Islands until it was sunk in 1937. And a full 33 years later, it was refloated and brought all the way back to the dry dock in Bristol where it was first built and that's where it has been ever since. So today, the ship has actually been converted into a museum ship. And as you can see here, you can actually go down into the dry dock um, and see the damage even to the hull where it was sunk. You can then go onto the ship where it has been refitted with a very similar interior to replicate how it would have looked back in its day. Um, a lot of the ship has been refurbished, but there are sections like here uh, where you can just look into the empty skeleton of the ship um, as well as see the engine and the, the construction and, and how it worked. Being inside the ship was a very surreal experience um, and also the entire dry dock is fitted out to kind of look like I suppose a 19th century dry dock. Uh, there's two museums around, a museum about the SS Great Britain itself and then a museum dedicated to, uh, to Brunel as well which are both really interesting. It costs around £18 to go inside, but in my opinion, it is worth every penny and you won't be disappointed. So from here on out, you can explore the rest of the docks. Um, a couple of other little honourable mentions. Um, first of all is the M Shed, which is a very um, interesting looking museum, which is about a five minute walk away. Um, and also if you fancy some shopping or some uh, some food, maybe you're hungry, uh, a place called Wapping Wharf, which is a, a big selection of shipping containers that have been refitted into a load of restaurants and shops. <laughs> And also if you are a fan of Banksy's artwork, again about five minute walk from the ship is one of his paintings called uh, The Girl with the Pearl Earring. So uh, yeah, if you're a fan, check that out. But with all that, let's move on to my next point. So my next thing to see would be Clifton Suspension Bridge. Uh, now this bridge was built in 1864 based on the designs of Eisenbach Kingdom Brunel, once again. And sitting at about 101 meters above the water, this bridge is one epic sight to see. Um, these videos were taken from the Clifton Observatory, which gives you the best views over Bristol and the bridge, in my opinion. Um, it's a short 10 minute walk uphill to get here, but at the top is a really nice park. And I think the bridge is just such an iconic part of Bristol. It would be a crime to go to Bristol uh, and not see this. Um, so I would definitely recommend it. So from here, we are heading back into the city center of Bristol and going to the Bristol City Museum and Art Gallery. So this museum is free to enter and it has some really nice collections. There's a lot of natural history here as well as my personal favorite section on Egyptology with a massive sarcophagus collection and you know, more Egyptian carvings that you could possibly imagine. It also includes a lot of Bristol's history, including uh, artifacts that were dug up around the Bristol area. Um, there's a lot of great artwork in the galleries on the top floor as well. And all these things together make this place a great option, um, as well as it's free as well, which is just a bonus. Um, and you can also explore a lot of the city center surrounding uh, this museum. And then finally, uh, probably about a 10 minute walk from the museum, 
um, walking back down towards the docks, so we're almost going full circle really, is the Bristol Cathedral. So this cathedral is located right next to the Bristol City Hall and it has some incredible architecture. It has a very gothic design and it's packed with just so much detail. I think as you're looking at it, you'll just see something new every second just pop out at you. Um, so it's just a really great place to see. The surroundings also make this really nice. Um, it's in the middle of a great park. Um, and as I said, the City Hall is um, a pretty incredible building in itself, to be honest. So that pretty much sums up my, uh, my one day in Bristol. Uh, if you do happen to visit Bristol and have longer than one day, a few other things you can see. Um, firstly, obviously, is take a day trip to Bath. That would be my number one suggestion. And then you've also got Bristol Zoo. You can check out the rest of Banksy's artwork spread throughout this entire city because there's so much of it. Um, and whilst you're doing that, explore some more of the parks because there are so many of them. Um, one park that I would suggest if you're really interested in, in history, there's a place called Temple Church um, and it's an abbey that was destroyed during World War II by a bomb um, and it's been completely left. It hasn't been refurbished or rebuilt or anything. So yeah, if you're a history buff, then uh, definitely go check it out because um, it's really uh, interesting to see. So I hope you enjoyed my list. Uh, let me know if you feel like I missed anything. Make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed. Uh, feel free to check out the rest of my channel. I am traveling all over the UK at the moment. I've got some great videos coming up very soon on uh, Stonehenge as well as some of the great castles spread throughout. So thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one and goodbye. <laughs>